light rail through Salt Lake City has many battle wounds associated with that still. He's finally getting over some of that. But uh, we talked about, you know, what would we be interested in for, from Wasatch County's perspective when it comes to transit? Not from Park City's perspective or not from Utah County's perspective or Sundance Resort, but would there be an interest and any uh, desire for you guys to study transit within the Heber Valley and making those connections to those spots, if that was of interest to you. So Chad has done a little bit of um, uh, thought on that and he's got what, seven or eight slides for us. Thank you. I also put together just a draft work scope of what that project might look like. And I only put it up 20 of them. I don't want to go all the way around with that, but I'll start to pass that if you would like. <clears throat> You know, the idea of transit is, um, can be a, a big change in the community. It, it makes the community feel differently. And there are some in our community that don't have the ability to get to college or get to where they need to go to. Uh, and that's where transit can fill that gap. It helps with traffic. It takes the peak times um, that we see off. It helps kind of take some of those peak times when our cars are out there and we're congesting the roads. It just kind of takes that edge off and makes it so that our facilities work better. So anyway, I just kind of threw together a couple ideas about transit and other places. Um, first of all, I guess the first thing about transit is it doesn't have to be complicated. It can be simple. You can have small vehicles. Um, I don't know exactly where this map is. I found it on the internet. But they've got four or five routes there. It doesn't have to be very complicated. It can just kind of fit to your community the way you'd like it to fit. <clears throat> this is uh, just a little bit about the Uinta County under the Basin Transit Association. This is just a group of cities that decided to form together and, and they've got some buses and they run some routes. Um, started in 2011 and basically it just serves uh, Duchesne to Roosevelt, Roosevelt to Vernal and then also kind of circulates through the city of Vernal. And it's a really interesting kind of ride. I went up there one time and rode around with some of the guys that do that. And it's, it, the community loves it. They have a lot of um, uh, good interactions with people that, that need this kind of the trips that also helps with the roads. They've only got, in some cases, a, a two-lane road that gets in between Roosevelt and, and down and through there, and this helps just with some of the traffic flow. Um, I don't know if you're familiar with Cache Valley. Um, several years ago, they started a transit district. This is in the early 90s. Um, of course, they have a significant university there that takes their ridership up quite a bit, but the, the graph <coughs> Only go up to 2013, but you can see it's had a big increase in ridership over the years. Uh, up to they carry that number where they're about at up there is about two million riders a year that they carry. But again, with the student population, it's really more likely that they ride that a lot. They made a choice in their system to make it fare free, so they pay a sales tax for it, and they don't charge a fare to anybody who wants to ride, and they love it. That's just something that they chose to do in their area. Um, also down in St. George, a few years ago they started Sun Tran. Um, down there, you can see the map down there, it's about five or six routes uh, through Ivan's and different areas of St. George. And um, it's been very successful. They've added lots of new buses and bought some, some new vehicles and added routes. So it seems to be doing quite well down there as well. They just have a little app on the side where you can even pull up and just look at the schedule from your phone if you want to. Um, so it's really kind of community friendly the way they, they want it to be. So this feasibility study that I just handed out to you, um, just some of the things it could do, it would uh, or could create a list of interested stakeholders to participate in this process. Um, you might be surprised who might be interested in this. Uh, different homes, different um, group homes sometimes do, or medical facilities, campus. Uh, different things like that can, can find some good interest in this. QBU is right now on a pass uh, system with UTA. They're just starting up and, 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 they'll, and they use that a lot. And so with the campus up here, if that were ever a connection that were made and you desired to make that connection to Utah County, for instance, you could have students that might use that. Um, as part of the study, we gather information about the community, your travel patterns, trip origins, destinations, some of the same stuff we would use in the, in the transportation plan that we would do. Um, develop surveys, public outreach efforts, identify desired transit routes and modes, 
the type of vehicles you'd like to use and assess the demand for them and prepare a proposed transit routing and service plan and then work to develop a 10-year revenue and financial feasibility plan. That's just a few of the ideas we had. This could be modified to whatever you think is important. If there's an element that if you're interested in studying this concept that you want to add, easily can be done. So it's just the, the beginning right now. So if you have any questions, um, that's my contact information. And so you can feel free to give me a call. I don't know why my email is in green, but um, anyway, if you have any questions at all or anything I can answer? You know, like the data for this would would synergize with what we were just talking about earlier about the road plans and the traffic patterns and all that. Because certainly, if you have, I mean, I, I I go off into an area that has buses, you can go anywhere, and so I wouldn't feel terribly handicapped to not have a car there, but I would here. So, I mean, you've got to have a certain level where it's practical to say, I can go with what I need to on the bus, versus I want to go out to Ivan's and back and go to school in town, you know. Sure. But anyway, it's... And, and you've got to get those destinations right and have a frequency so that you feel comfortable uh, getting on there, knowing you're not going to be stranded out there for three hours and then yeah. have to come back in. And you're right, our travel demand model, um, down in the urbanized area down in Utah County, we put the the choice model to say how likely are people to choose to ride transit over their cars. And it's based on uh, a bunch of factors of preference that we survey. So it's just to say if you have a choice between a car and riding a bus, how likely are you to make that choice? And what factors influence it? So if a route's really frequently by your home, that would influence your desire to use it. If it's not, you're going to take your car. So that's what our travel demand model will do. It will calibrate how many likely users you will get in a certain area if you have a route there. Yeah, maybe just an editorial comment. Um, over the years, this has been pushed by Park City, and it's being pushed by Park City in this situation as well. Um, and I think they're, obviously, they're concerned about the traffic coming into Park City on 248 hoping that we would look at transit as an option and that would get cars off the road coming into their city. Um, so that's been a concern as we've discussed this. Does transit coming down to our valley from Park City increase the demand for uh, workforce housing down here? Uh, so that's just one of the issues that we've been taking on with this. Thanks, Doug. I know you also mentioned that in the scope to look at housing, but I did the list up here on the slide. It's an important part that we need to be able to Mr. Eccles, isn't it a graduated approach for the use of park and ride lots, and then maybe, you know, if this body or the entities decide to work with Park City, then those park and ride lots could be natural gathering places, you know, for the longer transit. I mean, what would what could Nag or what could you not do to start with something like that? Yeah, that's, a, that's an easy start, of course. You definitely could do parking rides. Um, one option you could do is what's called a dial ride service, where you basically have a bus that's there, and then if someone needs a ride, they call in to a central dispatch, and then that bus goes out and picks them up and maybe takes them to a parking ride, or they can catch a regular fixed route bus that might go to wherever you wanted to go. Well, what's the level of service for how many calls that could take versus? You know, we have parking rides out by Wall Street. Why not have one on the way out to Park City? Yeah. Like, why not have one around River Road at that kind of intersection? You see what I'm saying? Yeah. That, that would definitely work. I mean, you, some of those parking rides are just used for carpooling, where people pull up there and they'll hop in a car with a friend and go. Mm -hmm. and, and that can work as well. That's, that's a great service, too. But you can influence and have more than more people park there if you make a transit connection. Yeah, that's what you're saying. I think we need to start perhaps smaller on this. Which, Kelly, do you remember on our city survey what the response was on transit services? Because we did ask about that, but I think it was a couple of hundred. I don't remember. It was 200. Something. Out of the 900 to 800. Yeah, 17 
something like that. Ten percent, though, significant. And these are these were higher income people usually too, right? Lower income people would probably want that more. Mark, do you have that? Um, just within seconds. Thank you. Some, some people who are higher income, they feel like an obligation, either environmentally or otherwise, to just not drive their car anywhere. So we do get quite a few riders just on principle decide that they like to commute. <coughs> but you do see it effective. I mean, you want to count them, they don't have. Well, what's the potential for mass transit even for tourism? Like uh, a bus out to Silicon Valley, right? A bus to our convention center, you know, to those kinds of spots, which is it, and it depends on time of year. What you try to do is look at what you're seeing now, and then maybe, um, you know, for the soldier hall or the winter time would be great. Something better. 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 Something Three hundred four and seventeen and four fifty-six. On the corner of River Road and the highway, we don't have the extra ground right there. On the northeast, northwest corner, I think that kind of runs that east. But I think the north, the northeast, or the actually kind of the southeast piece. There's some. There's kind of a big open area there. It's the old road. The old Where road. The old that road is. Line. That's I'm still you don't. Part of the park and ride to the community salt lake or community park city. Yeah, and, and I know at some point there's been planned to be that that intersection be grade separated, but it, there's no reason it couldn't be used for a park and ride until that happens. Yeah. Yeah. Or if you could put one in the other uh, development, uh, Keeper City, you know, North of Kings, all the ones you can see that. Than the parking lot, but still there's development trying to go in there. And maybe that's the potential there. There's probably be more room uh, at River Road intersection. You know, even we look at areas like Eagle Mountains here in Springs and Utah County, and we're considering parking right ideas there to bring people in areas because it doesn't make sense to troll all the way out to Eagle Mountain Center. So you just kind of look at where you think people would gather, or if you gather in place, and that would make sense. I think that sounds like a good location. But is this stuff, this study is much bigger than the class of <coughs> it, so it, it can be. It, it can be, you, you can determine whatever level of service you want it to do. Um, you can identify and have part of the scope be identifying key areas for parking lot locations. That could be part of the project yeah. if you want to just study that. It's so yeah, it, 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 it just depends on what you choose to study. Um, no, it's 50,000 I think is, is a valid number for the area and the, what the complexity of what we have going on here. Um, but what you choose inside there to focus on can relate to that. And if you, if you decide to go in real depth, you might go more than that. But I think we can justify the work, whether we include parking rights or transit routes or whatever, you decide to about that level. And I think we can make the study level about right there. So is the next step, if we as a group like this decide if we want to move forward, or we go back to our individual councils and say, hey, we think it's a good idea to do the study, and we come back, and what, what do we just need to tell you if we're interested in doing it? Is that no, I think we wanted to bring the topic up tonight. How do you guys be aware of it, you know, and discuss it. And if it's something that you wanted MAG to work on, we could work on it for you. If you wanted some other organization to work on it for you, you could have someone else do this work. We just wanted to bring the topic up since we know we're going to adopt a new transportation plan a year from now. If we are going to consider transit at that point in time, it'd be nice to do something this year to get us ready for that adoption in 2019. So, so the funding source, 50,000, and you're looking at this local funding. Um, you know, we haven't cobbled together any money. We don't know where the money comes from yet. There is some money through our local planning assistance that uh, Mountain Way could put into that as well. So I just uh, asked Chad, I said, put together a scope, schedule, and budget of what you think something like that would cost. And Chad did that with, uh, with talking to a couple consulting firms. I think we spoke with Fair and Pierce. And, a couple other firms have got that list of tasks, and it's about 
It's like about fifty thousand bucks, probably six one hundred. So it's totally out of the air. There's nothing magical about that scope. We could reduce it down to a park and ride lot study. That could be an easy thing to do. Probably a ten thousand dollar study or something like that. Or we could make it a full fledged transit study or whatever. If you guys have interest, you tell us. If you don't have interest, just tell us you're not interested. We won't bring it up again. We just put the problem as a good opportunity to talk about it. And where you're the over the majority for three counties. I guess if we ask any questions about getting to Park City or you try to validate the Del Bay Park, right? I don't know about that last part. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think, you know, we do uh, some great coordination work with some uh, in Utah counties, and we know uh, all the players in those counties and have a great working relationship with them. And they've always been great to partner with us on any studies, I would assume that, uh, I would think that they would participate financially if we were to ask them to do so, but I don't know that you want to. go in that way, in that way. You may want to control the study all by yourself and say, what does Wasatch County want? And control that scope and that schedule and that budget and make sure you guys know what you want first before you start to reach out to Park City or out to Utah County to figure out what other players are interested in. And so it depends on how you, look, how you want to look at it. But they did include, um, they did include in their study just people that were already working here. I mean, working there and living here. So that was part of their study. And I, I was told they are willing to help financially just because it benefits them so much. So of course we would have to decide what we want to do, but I know there's, that's an opportunity. I remember Doug, you know, Doug's point about how um, Park City had in the development code a piece on their affordable housing um, requirement that if the affordable housing was located on a free transit line, that then that could qualify as their affordable housing mm -hmm. if it were in Camino County. And that they was, repented from that. Then. Yeah, they did. They did a great job of pulling that back out of the code. <laughs> and because it was brought to their attention. And so that was a concern of Wasatch County for quite some time is, is this going to become an affordable housing better community to the resort community when indeed the resort community should provide affordable housing for the resort community themselves. Sean? We should have, yes, Mike? That, that also works a little bit in reverse because now we have difficulty hiring people. Mm -hmm. And so uh, transit ability, and quite honestly, it's not going to come from Park City. It's likely to come from Utah Valley to be able to bring people to the valley to work because we can't hire uh, law enforcement, emergency services, school teachers, a lot of basic services were having an incredible difficult time uh, because the cost of living is so high here. And so I really like the idea of looking at our issues and then, and if they cross over in other people's park cities or anybody else's, that's great. But focusing on our issues first, I think, would be great. Really. So, so I guess we could identify in this. Air traffic patterns and projections. Air traffic. <laughs> Air traffic commuters. I don't think that was in the scope. You know, I've been driving a Tesla phone around the airport for about hours. Yeah. Right. Very good. I've been interested in having some type of transit study like this for a while, and I would hope that the that the county, the rest of the county council, or the city council would at least go through a study because I understand what Doug's pointed out is concerned the county council we talked about that about the low-income housing issue but Brian Starks our economic person tells us that over 70 percent of the people who live in Wasatch County commute out of Wasatch County so if it does benefit others that's okay but we know that we're near failure on our main street so we could benefit from it and I think we need to look at it all Look at every approach right now, if it's park and ride or if it's single call or I think we just need to look at it and then reassess it over time because we may not need a bus today, but we're going to need it very, very soon, probably mm -hmm. sooner than we think. And it meets our needs because our growth, as we see, tells us we have to have some type of transit. And so I don't think that we can continue to turn a blind eye to it and say, well, we don't want to invite a lot of people to come in to low income, you know, to be more low income users because we have a hard time providing it. We're already providing it and we're past our breaking point in a lot of ways. I think the bus would help.
help us just as much as anyone else. So I, I would be in favor of doing the $50,000 study, and maybe if Mag could uh, contribute to it, which I think probably can, and Summit, and everybody who's part of Mag would probably jump at the opportunity to help us fund it, because they know that it would benefit them and us at the same time. That's just my two cents on it. I think we should do it. Get a bus out there. And it doesn't commit us to anything, it just means that we've done the study. So it seems like the general consensus is we would love to step forward. Is there anyone opposed to having us take the next step into whatever, you know, step one? Yeah, we'd, uh, maybe if you wanted to see one coming. Yeah, we'd have to go before. And then I'd have to be. Let me ask why it's only a 10 year rather than a Could be. It just seems like 10 years, uh, depending on the level of commitment you wanted to make at that time, at least give you a, a short term look at it and a little bit of length. But if you wanted to go into a longer term, you probably would include that into the transportation plan that Sean will be doing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we could do, uh, we have a contract with Lucia and Robertson in Birmingham right now. That they have a financial model that we use that goes out to the year 2050. We could probably add them in and have them do a component of that to do some long-range projections. We just thought the 10-year block was a natural because it's we have we don't have anything that exists today. We don't have any ridership data. We don't know what it's going to do, if anything at all. So maybe start out that 10-year thing and then reassess in four years. But we certainly could go out longer. But whatever study or whatever trends that we did in this hour would not be part of the You know, it could. ETA a few years ago connected to Park City, and they worked out a joint agreement that where Park City paid for part of it and ETA paid for part of the route to connect uh, from Salt Lake County. Um, there was some talk back then about would Wasatch County be interested in connecting all the way down and making kind of a loop along the Wasatch back. Um, <clears throat> it, it's, it would be up to you. You have your own driver's seat. You can control that if, if you're interested in having ETA be a part of it. I think they'd be willing to have a discussion. Um, but you might just look at the feasibility of it right now, but if you, if that's an easy way to go, just to create an ETA route that goes up here, they would be probably willing to discuss it. I think that connection is very interesting, interesting but I don't think you want ETA to run your transit service. Mm -hmm. you know, because um, they're a unionized labor force, and maybe some overhead is greater than what you could run here yourselves for more efficient. I think you could run it more efficient locally than you then you would um, contract with UTA. Uh, Logan, for instance, um, Logan contracts out with a private entity, so they actually hire students to come run that, and it's a lot cheaper than what UTA pays their unionized drivers to do the same system. But, you know, they, they're bringing in, they could get it like that if, if you wanted something fast. We don't have anything against the union. My grandfather's rolling over right now in his ribs. <laughs> <laughs>